Okay, I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. Zach George made a video talking about the American Veterinary Society of Animal Behavior, coming out with a new statement saying that all dog training should only be purely positive dog training, that there is never a place for any aversive tools, any aversive, aversive methods, even if it is to eliminate severe problems like aggression. They say there's never a place for it anymore. First off, you should go to that Zach George video and you should watch it. It is a 40 minute deep dive into this statement, the science behind this statement. It's done very well. He doesn't just pick a side. He brings up good points from both sides. I thought he was just gonna be like, oh yeah, I agree with this, because he's a positive reinforcement trainer, right? Zach George, I thought he'd be like, oh yeah, this is great. He didn't do that. It was done very well. So first of all, watch that, because I am not gonna be so kind, okay, about what these folks say, because a lot of it is crazy, and it's done with an agenda. And this is a big deal. Zach George said this is a big deal. He was like, oh my God, it's gonna shake the dog training world up. Well, it is, but I don't think it is for the reasons he think or, or normal pe or, or, or the public thinks. It is a big deal, but it's for different reasons. And I'm gonna tell you what those are. All right, so basically position statement on humane dog training. Evidence supports the use of regular based, of reward based methods for all canine training. ABSAB promotes interactions with animals based on compassion, respect, and scientific evidence. I agree. Based on those factors, reward-based learning offers the most advantages and least harm to the learner's welfare. Research supports the eff efficacy of reward-based training to address unwanted and challenging behaviors. Really? So research supports the efficacy of reward-based training to address unwanted and challenging behaviors? I've looked at the research that they're talking about. And it is flimsy at best, the way they did this stuff. It's pretty crazy when you actually read these studies, which you should, what they did with these studies. It's nuts. You think this is folks in lab coats comparing e-collars versus reward-based in real-world environments? That ain't it. You think this is taking a really high-level... Um, uh, prong collar for loose leash walking and a high level give treats for loose leash walking person and comparing the efficacy of that and also bringing in the, the stress level on the dog. You think that's happening? That's not what's happening. That's not these studies. They're basing this on studies that are so flawed, that are so bad. It's unbelievable. So they basically say that positive reinforcement can decrease behaviors, right? That's what they're saying. And it says the whole thing. You can read this whole thing. It's a few pages long. They basically say the same thing over and over again, that positive reinforcement is as or more effective and less harmful for the dog. But they also include management a lot because they know it's not true. So they say, oh, but management, which means basically you can't get your dog around other dogs. Even if your dog's just a little fearful, God forbid you give them a little correction, even if that would fix them, can't do it. So you can't bring, that's management. Okay, here's the thing that is crazy, or there's many things that are crazy about this, is positive reinforcement doesn't decrease behavior. So how are they saying this? Well, positive reinforcement trainers will often say, well, positive reinforcement doesn't decrease behavior, so we're gonna use these other methods. We're gonna use redirection, or we're gonna use DRO, DRI, different reinf differential reinforcement, other behavior or in incompatible behavior to get rid of behaviors. If you've been in a PetSmart class, your dog barks at another dog, God forbid you tell them they can't do that, you're either going to redirect them back to you, then give them a treat, or you're gonna wait till they stop barking and give them a treat. That's redirection, and the other example is DRO, DRI, where you're reinforcing them when they're not doing the behavior, the wrong behavior, then the target behavior, the, re the redu behavior you wanna reduce, the correct behavior will push it out, right? Not using punishment. The problem is this stuff doesn't work. It just simply doesn't work. There's only one way to reduce a behavior, really. There's one way, and that is punishment, not mean punishment, the operant punishment, positive punishment. That is the only way to really reduce a behavior. We can't get around that. There's not really getting around that, okay? So here's the thing too, they have position statements. Where is their position statement on saying you can't do adversives at their own vet clinics? Where is their position statement on that? That 
Vets can no longer hold dogs down. Vets can no longer pull a dog to the back room, to the clinic area. Why don't they have that? You know how much is going on in vet clinics every day? How much adversive stuff is going on in vet clinics? It's crazy. Oh no, no, you dog trainers, you dumb dog trainers and people at home, you guys can't be doing this bad stuff. We can do it. We're special, we're, we're vets, we're doctors, we're scientists. We're doing this stuff. We can do what we need to do because, because we make the rules, but you guys cannot do it. It's hypocritical. It's obviously hypocritical. Oh, but Joel, we would have to, if we couldn't pull a dog to the back room or hold a dog down, we'd have to, we'd have to hire more staff and train more people. Yeah, yeah. How about your staff sit there for two hours while that dog gets comfortable before you bring him to the back room? Oh, but that's not realistic. Okay, then don't say that trainers have to do things that aren't realistic either, or you at home has to do things that aren't realistic either. All right, guys, this is a big deal. Here is why it's a big deal. Because this is laying the groundwork and the pretext for outlying these tools and to eventually outlying these methods. Done, they're outlawed, they're gonna be outlawed. E-collars, prong collars, choke chains. I don't use these things. I don't really care. It doesn't really matter to me. What I don't like is corporations, which the big box stores are behind the movement to, to ban these things. And so the scientific community behind the movement to ban these things. I don't like when they come in and they tell everybody else what to do and what's right when they are the hypocritical ones. You know one of the big box stores stopped selling e-collars, then six months later came out saying, we need to do better for our pets, let's ban, let's basically they, they, without saying ban them, they were saying let's ban them. Six months after they stopped selling them, at least give it a couple years, you guys. At least act like you weren't just making profit off of it six months ago, and now because it's politically uh, uh, nice, you're gonna now go, oh yeah, we wanna ban these things because we love our pets. You were selling, you were making money off these things six months ago. So the corporations and the scientists are behind it. Doesn't matter if you're not behind it. You don't matter, I don't matter, okay? They have lobbyists in state house, this stuff's getting banned. I told you it three months ago in a video that it was gonna happen. I didn't know it was gonna happen because this, these studies came out saying positive reinforcement is more effective or as affected in that it causes less harm than, in, than any other method. Now the science is behind it, it's happening against your will. Few people want it to happen, a few corporations and a few scientists want it to happen, so it's gonna happen. So that's the deal. That's my, that's my opinion on it. You guys asked in the comments, you wanted my opinion on this, I'm giving it to you. Don't forget to comment, like, Subscribe, do all that good stuff. And oh, I'm gonna make another video in two days. We're gonna dive into the science, that's it.